Perfect. Well, good, uh, good afternoon, Huskies. Welcome. Uh, today we have another great event for, for everyone here today. Um, Lockheed Martin is in the house along with Sikorsky. Uh, I'd like to welcome Brian, uh, Evian, and Jamie uh, on behalf of the organization. Uh, we're definitely going to get a lot of great insight about the company, uh, about opportunities that many of you would like to learn about, as well as hopefully answering some of those key questions that you have regarding careers and potential growth uh, and, and, and uh, again, growth roles and opportunities within the organization. Um, so I'd like to, again, just uh, if we can go around just to make that soft introduction here, um, Brian and Evian and um, Jamie, if you could, you guys could maybe just potentially give us a little bit of insight about you and your background, what you actually do for Lockheed Martin, um, and a little bit of insight too about, um, you know, maybe the organization. So some of our incoming students also could learn about the, the great things that Lockheed Martin does uh, in the aerospace uh, sector. Absolutely. So if I could uh, share my screen, I, we do have some about me slides and some other information. Absolutely. Please take it away. All right. Thanks so much. Uh, happy to be with everybody here. Let me see if I can figure out how to share my screen. Is that working? It is working. Yes. All right. Excellent. So uh, <laughs> thanks so much for having us. I'm Brian Crawl. I'm the campus recruiter uh, with UConn. Uh, excited to work with the school. Today we have Evian and Jamie. And we're going to get into a couple different things as we begin here. So just in general, who is Lockheed Martin? Uh, before we get to the guest speakers, you know, Lockheed Martin is a global security and aerospace company. We're principally engaged in, in research, design, development, manufacture, integration, and sustainment of advanced tech systems, products, and services. So we have over 114,000 total employees. So we are a rather large company, uh, 7,800 international. One in five is a vet and then 58,000 engineers, scientists, and IT professionals. And this is just a very, very high overview of Lockheed Martin. Um, you know, there are, when you think about it, so there are five business areas within Lockheed. So we have aeronautics and some of the different things that they, they, that they work on there. MFC, which is missiles, fire, and control. Um, I remember them because they make missiles, they fire them, and then they control them. But we also do some battery and energy stuff. That's how I remember them. RMS, which Sikorsky falls under RMS. Uh, so I remember them because they make helicopters and so many, many other things. Space, they do space stuff, obviously. Um, but, the, you know, a lot of communications, every mission to Mars, uh, rovers, all those types of things we've been involved with. And then enterprise operations, which we do have a representation here today. Um, you know, that's more corporate. I fall under enterprise operations. So GD&I, Advanced Tech Labs, HR, and then corporate IT as well. And all of these have business and finance and business and operation opportunities within them. Uh, they're all kind of their own uh, entities within Lockheed Martin, and they have those finance, business, and operations opportunities within each of these as well. And just to talk about location, so headquarters uh, is right there in Bethesda, Maryland, RMS, their headquarters is DC, MFC is Texas, Aero is Texas, and Space is Colorado. Uh, we are in 54 different countries, over 375 facilities. Uh, now, now, those are just the headquarters. You know, obviously, we are in Sikorsky up in Connecticut uh, and many other facilities up in Connecticut and New York, uh, PA. So as you see here in this slide, there's there's lots and lots of other locations, uh, not just specific to those headquarters. So lots of opportunities within Lockheed. And again, you know, many of those are finance, business and operations as well. And there is there's one of the helicopters that we, we make at Sikorsky. So the customers, really quickly, U.S. Departments of Defense, Homeland Security, Commerce, Energy, State, Transportation. Uh, additionally, outside of the U.S. government, we work with the NASA and other IT, uh, intelligence communities, but also 70 other governments worldwide. I, I can't tell you what they are. They don't tell me what they are. Um, but lots of other customers that we work with. Careers, as you see, many engineering careers here, but also business HR, finance, operations, supply chain management, many other public relations, many other opportunities within Lockheed. And the best place to find those are LockheedMartinJobs.com. Um, some folks, some universities use Handshake or Simplicity or other websites to post positions. Really the best place to apply to those would be at our job site right there. And just a little bit of our commitment to diversity and inclusion and community involvement. Uh, within Lockheed, we do have seven business resource groups. 
um, just like there's SWE or SHIP or, you know, supply chain management, student organizations within a, a college or university, we have those kind of within Lockheed as well, as well as many other supportive uh, business resource groups to tag up and really help each other out. Externally, we support a lot of different programs, K through 12, other minority serving institutions, MSIs, uh, diversity organizations, like and those conferences, and NSBE, SHIP, SWE, SACE, things like that. And then in the community, we've donated eight, over 18 million to the communities for COVID, for wildfire, hurricane relief, and various other things. Uh, lots of other corporate social impact funding and social uh, sponsorship donations to various different things as well. So to jump in, I would like to throw it over to Evian to talk about herself. Hello, everyone. My name is Evian Crosdale. I am born and raised in Connecticut and went to school at UConn. So I'm certainly a Connecticut girl. I'm from Milford, Connecticut. I went to UConn and uh, earned my undergraduate degree in business management, graduated in 2014. And I also had a minor in economics at UConn as well. So I was part of the School of Business, but also had that minor there for CLAS. And, you know, just to talk about my, you know, past internship experience, you know, like you all, when I was back at UConn as a student, I wanted to figure out what I wanted to do when I graduated. And in order to do that, I, you know, pursued various internships so that I could understand the careers that were out there and what would be best, you know, suited to my skill set and my passion. I, with the help of the Inroads organization, I uh, was able to earn three internships throughout my college career, which was such an amazing opportunity. For those of you who do not know the Inroads organization, Inroads is a nonprofit that develops and places talented youth in business and industry and really prepares them for corporate and community leadership. So Going um, through the inroads program to secure my internships within Sikorsky at that young age really prepped me to understand what I wanted to do for a career. My first two internships, I interned with the industrial engineering department, and you might say, well, Evian was in the school of business. Why in the world did she utilize an engineering internship to understand what she wanted to do in her career? But industrial engineering is actually a very business focused type of engineering degree for those of you who are familiar with it. At Sikorsky, it was really all about measuring manufacturing efficiencies on our shop floor and what we can do better to, you know, refine our processes. So that was a really interesting experience, but certainly told me that I didn't want to pursue engineering. Um, and then my last summer internship, I interned with supply chain and I've been with supply chain ever since. Right now, my current role is in material estimating within supply chain. I'm a manager supporting the Sikorsky line of business, and I support any sort of Army, Air Force, International Black Hawk, Future Vertical Lift, and Navy proposals. So I definitely have a full workload. Essentially, what I do at Sikorsky is I'm very much upfront in the proposal process. So before we can secure a contract with the government, we need to be able to submit a proposal to them. My team works to analyze the bill of material that's necessary to actually build an aircraft. And we obtain supplier quotes from our supply base to be able to assign costs to the various parts we need to procure in order to build an aircraft. So we essentially provide the government with what you know our fully costed bill of material would be. So, you know, government it takes X amount of dollars to be able to um, build these helicopters for you, and then we engage in negotiations until we finally get on contract, and then we end up you know placing POs with our uh, purchase orders with our supply base and actually executing to those requirements. So, pretty cool stuff that I do here. So again, um, I earned my um, undergrad degree um, in um, business management, concentration in entrepreneurship with my minor in econ. And believe it or not, I also liked UConn so much that I pursued my MBA at UConn. Um, I went to Stanford campus uh, to earn my MBA and I finished that degree in 2018. 
as far as my interests go, I enjoy sports, which is why UConn was such a great fit for me. Not to brag, but my senior year is when the men and women won the basketball championship. So I've certainly been spoiled at UConn. Um, I really enjoy dance. I was part of the kick line team at UConn when I was there, for those of you who know about it. And I really enjoy volunteering. You know, as Brian mentioned, you know, with Lockheed Martin and Sikorsky, we really enjoy giving back to the community. And I've been very blessed to um, be in the position that I have been here at Sikorsky and Lockheed to be able to um, volunteer for a variety of things, whether it's, um, you know, having these sorts of chats with you all to, you know, meeting with younger kids and kind of teaching them about careers in STEM or even, you know, around Thanksgiving time, raising funds to be able to support our local food banks and everything so certainly appreciate that you'll see a couple of photos of me here the one over right all the way to the right is a photo of me and Marilyn Houston who's our former president and CEO of Lockheed Martin um, the middle picture is actually when I went to UConn I think it was back in 2018 or 2019 we had our LM day there so um, I was there representing um, Lockheed Martin at UConn and a couple of um, logos there. I support the Black Excellence Council. That's a business resource group here at Lockheed. And I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with the National Society of Black Engineers. I'm also um, supporting that professional chapter here in the Fairfield and New Haven counties. All right, so I'll just do a brief overview about my college experience. I know I already talked about a little bit about my activities and everything, but just some tips and lessons learned I wanted to share with you all. I know it can be very difficult to uh, be distracted by the many activities that are going on on campus. Definitely so important to get involved, to partake in those activities. A lot of these organizations that I was involved with really allowed me to build my resume with, you know, the things I was able to be a part of. You know, I was um, the communications chair um, for the kick line team. I was the treasurer for the National Society for Collegiate Scholars. Those are great resume builders. Um, so definitely think about how you can leverage the activities that you're a part of on campus to show your leadership and team work um, skill sets um, when you apply to opportunities, whether it be internships, future full time careers, et cetera. Um, but while you're in those activities, definitely don't forget to stay focused. Um, schoolwork, of course, is priority and really leverage your campus resources. Um, I definitely spent a lot of time, I think it was called the Q Lab at the time I was there, but you know, being able to um, leverage um, the resume centers that help you actually build your resume and refine it, um, you know, the um, math labs where you're able to get tutors on you know any sort of uh, math assignments that you have those things were really helpful for me to be able to um you know get assignments done on time as well as you know be prepared to um you know apply to various internships and full-time opportunities uh, certainly take time to meet new people your network is so important gets you a long way. Uh, whether you're in college or out of college, always take the time to meet new people, but not only meet new people, you need to develop and sustain relationships. So if you're introduced to someone for the first time, follow up with them via email and say, hey, it was really nice to meet you. Um, those are things that I've been able to leverage throughout you know, my internships and now full-time career to be able to um, you know, eventually, you know, get mentors who are able to, you know, provide me with career advice or just people in general who are able to point you in the right direction on where to go. And, you know, lastly, uh, as I mentioned, you know, I did have three internships while in college. Don't always assume that, you know, you have to wait until as you approach your senior year to get an internship. Just apply to anything and everything and see what happens. And as Brian mentioned, we certainly have a lot of, you know, um, opportunities on our website. So certainly go check that stuff out.
All right, and last slide for me, you know, I kind of already mentioned my diversity and inclusion involvement. I'm actually the DNI site lead for Connecticut here at Sikorsky and Lockheed. That's been a great opportunity for me to, you know, give back both internally and externally and ensure that, you know, we're creating a diverse and inclusive environment here at Sikorsky and Lockheed Martin. It's something I'm certainly passionate about and you'll see in some of these pictures, you know, some of the ways that I'm able to give back through that. The Bridgeport Rescue Mission is one organization that I support and, you know, every year around Thanksgiving time, they host a great Thanksgiving Day project where they raise funds to be able to um, supply turkeys and other food items to people in need in the community. I'm actually getting ready to kick off that donation um, fundraiser within Sikorsky in the next couple of weeks. So excited to continue to give back to that. I've been doing this for about five years now with the rescue mission. And as I mentioned with Inroads, it's definitely an organization that I'm proud to be part of. And although I'm I'm now full time and don't need to leverage their internship opportunities, I do what I can to give back. You'll see the left hand picture. I'm actually speaking at Sikorsky to promote the Inroads program um, here so that you know hiring managers um, you know look for opportunities to be able to hire Inroads interns. So again, something that I'm very proud of and Thank you all for having me here today. I'll hand it over to Brian and Jamie. Thanks, Abby. Yeah. Pass it over to Jamie. All right, thank you. Hi, everyone. I am Jamie Sinte. Um, I've been at Sikorsky for the past about 11 years, and I'll talk a little bit about uh, my career here in a minute. In terms of my background, uh, just like Evian, I am a Connecticut girl born and raised here. Um, I'm from a town called East Haven, and I currently live in Watertown. So, uh, you know, a lot of people actually are really local to, to Sikorsky. I'm not extremely local, um, but, you know, there's so many, uh, so many people from so many places in the building. It's, it's just great to have everyone there. Um, so, again, I started at Sikorsky in January of 2011, and I have my bachelor's in accounting as well as my MBA, both from Southern Connecticut State University. I started actually attending UConn for the pharmacy program uh, way back in I think 2006 when I graduated high school and quickly realized that I maybe didn't want to go down that road and um, took a turn and started doing classes at Southern and quickly realized that I really liked the business world and, and math and trying to merge those things together, uh, which is why I ended up with accounting. And so it just kind of goes to show that, you know, you maybe you have these plans and you just really never know where life will take you. So um, I had planned to just stay at Southern for a semester until I figured out where I wanted to go to school, but I ended up loving it so much. I stayed there and went back for my MBA. Um, during that time, I was working at a daycare, so I actually didn't do any internships. And that's one thing that I, I wish I focused on more in school. Um, but I really liked the consistency of, of my job. I had been there for a while uh, and I was able to get involved in some things in my job that actually applied to the accounting world, such as handling or helping out, I should say, really with the books um, and, you know, helping with taxes during during that time of the year. So I was lucky that my job was able to get me some firsthand accounting experience, but I do actually really wish I took more advantage of uh, some internship possibilities in a, in a true accounting role. Um, but, you know, here we are and, and all things work out. So in terms of my spare time, which uh, we do get because we have what is called Flex 980 schedule, or I'm sorry, Flex 410 schedule now at Lockheed Martin, where we work uh, Monday through Thursday, uh, primarily, I should say, uh, at least 10 hours a day, and then we get Friday off. Um, every Friday. So on that Friday off and, and on the weekends, I just really love spending time with family and friends and uh, trying new things when it's warm enough in Connecticut, going to the beach, uh, you know, doing some some yoga, shopping, all, all those fun things that kind of let you disconnect from the work day uh, or the work week and just kind of be yourself. But we're lucky enough to have that extra day to be able to uh, have more time to ourselves. In terms of involvement, um, I, I get involved in a ton of special projects outside of my day job at Sikorsky and across Lockheed Martin in general. 
Um, I'm working one right now where I had to sign an NDA form. So that was pretty cool. I never had to do that yet in my career uh, and just had to, you know, a couple months ago, I would say. So that's really fun. And I got involved in that special project, kind of like what everyone was talking about, which is really networking and building those relationships because you never know when someone's going to think of you for a specific opportunity. Uh, so that's kind of how I got involved in many of my special projects, including the current one that I'm working. In finance specifically, we also have uh, what's called a care team, and that really is an employee engagement, um, development, community service type of uh, group, if you will, for that focuses on on finance and really works around our closed calendar to uh, ensure that we're able to do some community service events and whatnot when it works with the business rhythm that that we're in. Uh, and with that, I got involved in this organization called Jane Doe No More, which is a local nonprofit organization. I started, I started getting involved there as Sikorsky was a sponsor of Jane Doe No More, no longer is, um, just due to things like turnover of, of uh, you, we used to be under United Technologies, now under Lockheed Martin, and many things had changed, but it was nice that we all still got to support the organization. Um, but under that, you know, I started, I, been working with that organization for the past 10 years or so, um, started out as a volunteer, then became kind of a, a volunteer liaison, if you will, between the, the nonprofit and Sikorsky volunteers. Uh, I then joined their, their board of directors, which was a great experience. So I did a stint there for two years where I was um, on the executive board as well as the secretary. Uh, and then now I kind of stick to more of the event planning, such as the annual gala that we do and the annual golf tournament that we do. Um, so really great experiences and really thankful that I work for a company who focuses on giving back to the local community, or I maybe would not have known about um, that organization and been able to get involved as heavily as I did. Uh, and then all the pictures that you'll see here on my slide are really just merging all of those uh, those hobbies and interests that I, I like to do together in one. So you'll see uh, some friends pictures on there and I just, I purposely put those on because those are actually friends that I work with. Um, that bottom right hand corner is a group of friends that I've had since starting out that were my coworkers turned into friends and that's us doing uh, one of the charity golf tournaments all together and just having a really great time. And then that middle picture, um, I also started out with those two girls and in treasury services where I began my career and that's us on vacation together. So it just goes to show that, you know, really creating a foundation where you are in your career um, develops into your personal life and so much more. Uh, and, you know, your coworkers become so much more than that and just really encourage everybody to, to make the most of, of where they are and the experiences that they're getting. And then the next slide will go into my uh, career path a bit. So um, I started off, as I said, in Treasury Services uh, way back in 2011. I started as a contractor actually, and I, I served as a contractor from uh, January to June, where then I, I became a full-time employee within the same role. Uh, and that was a really cool experience because uh, we kind of got to try each other out in terms of uh, myself and Sikorsky and my and my group there. So I got to see if I liked something without fully committed committing to it, and they got to see if they liked me and and my work ethic and what I could bring to the team uh, all through this con contractor uh, term, if you will. So, sorry, my video stopped. I believe. Um, in that role, I did a lot of things financials in terms of uh, billings and collections. I got really familiar with our primary customer, which is the government, and worked really closely with them on many things such as contract reconciliations, um, cash reporting, and got to really see how the government operates as a customer because that dictates, dictates excuse me, so much of our business um, and all the regulations that we need to follow. So. Um, you know, aside from just customer aspect of things, I also got to do a lot of internal reporting. And then I also got to be what was called the pilot of our ACE program. And our ACE program was um, called Achieving Competitive Excellence. And it was basically a play on Lean Six Sigma. So it brought together all of the aspects of Lean Six Sigma um, in order to create efficiencies and focus on process improvement and whatnot across the company. Uh, even our suppliers had to get ACE certified and go through this whole program just to ensure efficiencies, eliminate waste, and um, be as 
affordable as we could to the government. So that was something that I didn't even know existed when I was in college. And actually a lot of the tasks that I performed in this role are things that I didn't know existed uh, or, or had to be done at a company to be completely honest. Could attribute that to, again, not having those internships firsthand, but um, at the end of the day, I just think that there's so much more behind the scenes that that we don't really know about until we until we jump all in. Um, so a couple of years into that into that role, I decided to take a role in financial reporting. So I was there for about a year and a half or so. And my responsibilities there included things like intercompany consolidations, foreign exchange reporting, um, management over fixed assets and the whole capital process of, of capitalizing assets. Um, a ton of account reconciliations, as you could imagine, in a, in a core financial reporting role or general accounting role, as I, I believe it's called now, um, and just doing all those those types of things. But then I also got to expand on that ACE pilot role, where I, I not only was the pilot for the department, but also for the entire controllers organization. Um, so that was really cool, and I would say the next step in, in taking on a, a leadership role and getting firsthand into uh, experience into some of the behind the scenes meetings of, of how we need to roll out a new program or a new requirement or how we need to ensure that we're, we're tracking and, and staying on track for all of these supplier uh, certifications for this program. So that was really interesting, um, and that was also when we got bought out. Uh, by Lockheed Martin, this was, you know, over five years ago now, and I got to get involved in the merger and acquisition of it and what was called purchase accounting at the time. So that was really cool. I, I got to do um, a fair market value assessment on all of our capital assets and work with three of the four um, big four accounting firms and just kind of see how they all operate differently, what they're looking for um, and participate on a, a ton of audits. So really great experience there. After that, um, I wanted to really find out more about our products and my interest from this in, in this kind of stemmed from managing those capital assets and those fixed assets, because a lot of it is machinery um, and helps us build our aircraft. So I took a role in operations finance, specifically in aircraft cost, and I got to uh, build up, you know, the forecast or budget for all of our baseline aircraft models in terms of all of the material that goes into them, um, the labor, all the overhead rates. And I got to play around with a lot of financial modeling, which was really cool. Um, something that I, I hadn't done too much of before, uh, just to kind of see different ways of forecasting all of the cost that goes into our aircraft and uh, tracking to actuals, reporting up to management. So that was a really fun role and got me to know so much more about the product um, than I ever thought I would. And I really wish I actually took that role on sooner so that I could just have more of a connection to, to the material and the processes that we um, are doing accounting for, if you will, but um, you know, not firsthand working on the shop floor. So I thought that was really nice to bridge the gap. Um, during that time, I also got into what is called our finance leadership development program at Lockheed Martin. So that was my first rotation, just given the timing and um, the fact that I hadn't been in that role for too long prior to getting into the FLDP program, um, I stayed in there for my first role and just made sure to really enhance my statement of work. Um, when I was in the finance, uh, the FLDP for that first rotation, I was also on the engagement committee, which was fun. We got to plan um, our graduation or the graduation of the the year of that class down in Orlando, Florida, and we got to plan all of the summit or kind of uh, conference activities that took place with the development programs within finance uh, during that time or prior to graduation, but within that same week. So that was really fun. And I got to meet so many people across Lockheed Martin that I never would have gotten to do if I, if I hadn't uh, volunteered to be on that engagement committee. Uh, my second rotation in FLDP was Army program. So I was there a little bit uh, less than a year given the rotation time frame. And there I got to really expand on my abilities of financial modeling. And I got to work on the very beginning stages of our uh, multi-year 10 contract. So we have these multi-year contracts with the government uh, for various amounts of aircraft per year. Um, so we're on our 10th multi-year contract with the government contracting things like uh, like the various versions of Blackhawks, uh, just to be general. And I got to really look at all of the cost roll ups of those and, and provide estimates for pricing and estimating of, 
um, to go into the proposal from multi year 10. I also got to work with what's called our capture teams and our business development teams and work with a lot of people outside of finance uh, to see how new business is captured, which was really fun. Um, and then once that kind of took a back seat, I got to work some other new business pursuits. Uh, more in the spares and aftermarket business. So it was really cool to see um, the beginning stage of a contract being built up and then taking existing business that we have and try to rework it to maximize um, the best scenario for everybody, for ourselves and our customer. Uh, and then I am currently uh, in the next role that I that I had after the Army programs. I've, I've still, uh, I'm still there in core financial planning and analysis. My role first started off as more of a staffing and development role for finance specifically, which was a very different role um, than I would ever have thought I would be in uh, going into a company as an accounting major, having an accounting degree and going into a core accounting role. But, you know, like I said, we, things change and, and we never know where we're going to end up and what type of interests we may develop over the years and the opportunities that come uh, to kind of match those developments uh, of interest. So one was staffing and development. I got to work with the group um, that handled a lot of the training and a lot of just the recruiting and, and things like that. So it was natural to kind of go into this as a next step. And I got a lot of insight into different HR policies and procedures and um, just the way that, you know, staffing is planned, uh, the, the different events that take place to recruit people like yourselves in terms of internships or even our early career um, uh, new hires coming out of college. So that was really fun. And then um, it's kind of turned into more of a, not kind of, it has 100% turned into more of a finance role now, which is truly the core financial planning and analysis role uh, where I, my, me and my team, we consolidate all of the financials in terms of, um, you know, our P&L, our, our profit and loss statement, as well as our balance sheet and consolidate for all of Sikorsky and roll up so that we have this holistic picture of our, our line of business and can provide that to uh, RMS. I'm simplifying, of course, there's a lot that goes into it. Um, and the and we rely heavily on our program finance uh, analysts to provide us this data. And it's just really nice to see the holistic picture and get to learn um, a little bit about all the various programs that we have here. So with that, that is my uh, career background. I believe I will turn it over to Brian now, but um, please let me know if there's any questions or anything, or Brian, anything you want me to touch on that I didn't? I think that was fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing each, uh, each of you about your career path and your uh, things about Lockheed Martin. So I just wanna, at this point, kind of kick it off to any questions. Uh, Mike, do you have any questions as, as, as well to add? Um, Absolutely. I mean, wow, what a tremendous amount of insight, Brian. Thank you so much for that great introduction into the team and meeting you, Evian and, and Jamie as well, just to see your breadth of knowledge and experience that you guys really, really were able to develop uh, along along your, uh, Jamie specifically, you know, your, 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 over your decade here, if you will, with with Lockheed and, and UTC prior to that as well and going through the transitional phases. Gosh, I remember that tre treasury program as they you know, we would have recruiting for that as well at UConn. Um, but, you know, kind of pivoting a little bit on the topic of some of the job opportunities that you guys were mentioning and the expansion of all these different roles within different facilities throughout the country, given, you know, the pandemic and COVID, has there been an, a surplus or an area that really is in need right now as far as filling roles uh, for students or, or is it really across the board? Are there a lot of opportunities across the board in the spectrum here uh, for students in all different facets of, of, the, of, of, of your business line, if you will? I can say that first of all, you know, we are hiring over 2000 interns just this year for this coming summer and over 2000 new grad hires as well. And they, that is across the board, RMS space, Aero MFC. Um, and, you know, there are FNBO positions available across the board as well. Um, you know, it's, it's difficult to kind of pinpoint specifics, um, you know, Evian and Jamie might have more specific to the area if they, you know, if they're in touch with hiring managers or, the, or they are hiring managers themselves. But um, with that many, it's kind of difficult to say specifics. Uh, yeah. Evian and Jamie, have anything to add there? 
Yeah, just a couple of comments on that. So I am a hiring manager within supply chain. And I actually just had an intern from UConn, actually, uh, who just finished up his internship with us uh, a couple of months ago. And I think it's been great. You know, what I've been observing with the supply chain organization is we're very eager to ensure that if someone does a great job in their internship, that we bring them back either, you know, as another internship or a co-op or as a full-time employee. And I'm certainly happy to say that we did um, offer him a full-time uh, position and he did accept. So he will be joining us in May after he graduates. So just really That's goes to show the power of internships and how committed we are to, you know, growing our workforce in that capacity. And I'll just make another note too, you know, in general, I definitely think this pandemic has, been an eye opener to all of us in many different ways. But, you know, from a work from home perspective, it's showed us that, you know, not only can we ourselves who have been in the workforce for a while um, work from home in a 100% virtual environment, but we can hire people and train them in this virtual environment too. And I'll definitely say, you know, again, from a supply chain perspective, um, you know, we currently uh, continue to hire um, full time employees um, and they're 100% virtual. I hired three people last year who I never met in person. Uh, one of them specifically works um, or lives in Kentucky, I should say. So it's definitely changed um, the way that we recruit and the way that we hire. And I definitely think it's a great thing because it opens the door for um, you know, more and more candidates to have opportunities that they may not have otherwise had previously. Yeah, and I'll echo everything you just said, Evian. I mean. Same applies for finance. Um, we hired many people over the past year and a half, uh, including interns and and so many of which we've never met. And it really does. It, it's so nice to not have to limit yourself to just one specific location. And we were really able to pull the right talent into the right jobs because maybe, you know, some don't have the, the ability to relocate as easily as they would like to to be able to take on a job. Um, and that wasn't even a factor anymore. So it was really just getting the right people in the right jobs. And um, I think everybody's happy that way. But in terms of finance internships, um, I, I had run the program for the past three years. I just handed it off this year, actually. Um, but we've always had about 13 to 15, I would say, finance interns. Um, we plan to have the same coming up again this year. And we we did a lot of recruiting at UConn in the past, a lot. There was a, there was one summer where I had God, like 75% of our, our uh, intern class from UConn. And I was like, how did this happen? I, I, I should have really uh, figured this out or been more strategic about this, but it really was just, everybody was so fantastic. It, it just made sense. Um, and sometimes things like that happen, right? But um, last year we focused a lot on hiring off of our diversity and inclusion uh, recruiting events, specifically things like inroads or a Lockheed Martin University Day, which focused on uh, women in business and STEM careers. So um, we did a lot. Those things happened sooner in the year, which allowed us to recruit from those those uh, events. So I would just say, if anyone is interested, look out for those specific recruiting events. We do utilize them a lot for hiring and filling those open positions. Um, and it's just a great way to source talent. So. Absolutely, Jamie, I gotta say, you know, we always appreciate when we hear Huskies being hired and, you know, as much as we like owls as well, I, I definitely have to say, <laughs> I'm, I'm a little biased for the Huskies, right? Um, Absolutely. I guess I'd, <laughs> I'd love to uh, just popcorn a question for you guys. As far as skills though, you know, looking at the finance side, looking at supply chain, looking at HR, Brian, from your side, um, what are the skills that you really look for in students that are looking for internships or full-time jobs that really make them shine, uh, whether it's through the interview process or even that resume, kind of going back to what Evian, Evian was mentioning, uh, taking advantage of those resources back at the university. What really makes the students stand out? For me, I'll just say two things, uh, organization, organizational skills and communication skills. And that's across the board, whether it's financial business or physics or engineering, uh, you need to be able to communicate very well and sometimes very complex things to people who don't know what you're talking about. So communication skills, 100 percent is what I look for uh, specifically across the board. Uh, but now I'll, I'll hand it off. Yeah, yeah sure. I'll certainly... I... oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Jamie. <laughs> oh, I was just going to say, I always reference. Um, that list, I don't know if everyone's seen it or not, but it's a thing that's like 
you know, the top 10 things that require zero talent, but make all the difference. Um, and it really, it, it's just, it comes back to those things like being punctual, being interested, be, having a positive attitude. Um, like, I think there is a communication skills one on there as well, but it's really just showing your interest, communicating your, your connection and ability to take on challenges, take on tasks, um, you know, learn new things and just kind of be all in for, for lack of a better term. Um, but I think that if you can display those things, then the skills in something like a finance career, and this may not apply to engineering or somewhere else, but in finance, it really is so much on the job training that if you understand your classes and know the background information that you're learning, you can take all of that and apply it to your, your job. And it's so much on the job training and especially um, in larger companies such as Lockheed Martin, it's really industry training too that you don't get maybe um, the full the full sight of that until you're here and in the job. So I think that as long as you can convey that you're really ready to learn new new skills and take on whatever challenges cross your your skills. Um, I'm sorry, your plate. Uh, I think that that's really what I know we look for. Uh, and in terms of the interview process, we just really look for you to be able to tell a story to relate to whatever question it is that we're asking and showcase what you've done up up until this point in your life um, to prove that you are re willing and ready to take on those challenges and um, kind of explore and just go with the tide and, and see where things take you. Fantastic. Yeah, and I'll just um, add on a, a couple others. As I mentioned previously, I think showing that you're active in the community, whether it's, you know, what you do on campus or outside of campus, you know, being able to demonstrate your leadership skills in any capacity is important. And I think that kind of goes with what Jamie was saying about the interview too. Don't feel like you have to come in with specific, you know, school examples of how you performed a certain task or anything. Leverage all of the experience that you have and come prepared to the interview with you know concrete examples from a variety of um, different um, experiences and backgrounds that you have to be able to you know answer those interview questions and I'll also say too from a resume perspective not to say it's a required skill but I'd say desired uh, being able to demonstrate your proficiency with Microsoft Excel, Microsoft Access. Um, I've been seeing a lot of people you really develop their uh, coding skills. Um, it doesn't always seem like, you know, that's something that people desire, but I'll tell you uh, in the workplace, you know, especially with my role, it's definitely something that I would look out for as, you know, being a desired skill that I would look for in a candidate. So definitely, um, you know, leverage, you know, those types of resources. So you're be able, you're able to develop those technical skills. I know LinkedIn um, has certainly offered a whole bunch of courses to be able to develop those types of skill sets. Absolutely. Great insight, Evian and Jamie. Uh, Brian, thank you so much. I definitely want to pass the baton to some of the students here or, or staff as well that are joining me on this call today. Uh, if you guys have any questions, this is definitely your, your time to uh, you know, definitely take advantage to ask uh, Brian, uh, Evian, or, or Jamie uh, any any career related questions. I want to check the chat as well to see if we have any. Hi, um, I have a question. Please go ahead. So I'm Lauren Robert, and I'm a senior here at UConn, majoring in finance and minoring in analytics. And I'm really interested in the FLDP program. But I saw on your careers website that only employees that have been at the company for a year or greater are eligible for it. So I was wondering, like, what kind of roles would you recommend applying for, like, initially right out of college, if my ultimate goal is to join the FLDP program? Yeah, that's a great question. So, um, yeah, FLDP has, it seems as though it keeps uh, increasing in the minimum years of experience. And I think one reason is because we now have such a robust program around our early career development program within finance. Um, so I'm, I'm currently the site lead for that as they have been in the past few years. And I've really seen it um, expand and just grow, it, not just in terms of membership, but also in terms of 
uh, improvement around the training courses offered or the strategy around assigning different trainings based on someone's particular role. So I will say any early career, um, like level one or associate level uh, job that you find on LockheedMartinCareers.com, uh, or is it jobs.com? I forgot. Which one is it? Brian. Um, it's LockheedMartinJobs.com. <laughs> Thank you. Um, when you find it on there and it says something like associate or a level one uh, or early career, then just know you're automatically going to be enrolled in this early career development program where you'll have this whole host of trainings and networkings. Um, you'll have the option to, to take on a rotation um, about a year and a half to two years into that role. And that'll really get you ready for FLDP because FLDP is a competitive program where they do like you to have some experience and definitely some Lockheed experience too is very helpful um, just in terms of the style of application and interview and whatnot and the work that you'll be doing. So yeah, um, I would say look out for those early career development program jobs and those will really condition you for the path uh, for FLDP. Great, thank you so much. I didn't know that that you automatically get enrolled in the early career development program. So that's yep. great. Absolutely. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you, Jamie. So we do have another question um, from Olivia. Outside of finance, which other areas are recruiting for interns currently? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if Brian knows the answer better than me, but I'd say almost all of them, right? I mean, whether it's supply chain, engineering, HR, communications, literally all of the areas. The list goes on. IT. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, we IT. are definitely hiring every all areas. You know that the, our hiring season does begin, and positions get posted at the beginning of September, and our uh, interviews and our hiring begin. So we've already started to hire students, interview students. So that happens. At the beginning of September, throughout the uh, the fall semester, as well as in spring as well. So if you haven't started applying, definitely now is the time to start doing that. And just look at the basic qualifications. If you match those basic qualifications, apply to the position. Doesn't make you look bad to apply to more than one. Um, you can apply to as many as you like. Uh, just make sure that you do match those basic qualifications. And I think, Brian, what was so fantastic that you also mentioned is that given the size of the organization, Sikorsky is such a Sikorsky, Lockheed Martin, and all your subsidiaries associated with, with Lockheed is so large, right, that you have a focus area of human resources. But within HR, you still have specializations within there. Um, so, you know, and just to put in perspective for all the students here today, uh, you know, this is a multinational corporation, an MNC, and, you know, Lockheed has, uh, uh, again, a lot of opportunities uh, just outside necessarily within one scope of, of um, you know, an area, an arena. Uh, there's a lot of opportunities within there. As you just saw through Jamie's career uh, in the 10 years, you've had a lot of different uh, growth and, and just uh, opportunities to, to work on a variety of projects and focus areas, and whether it's on the government side, whether it's on, you know, the commercial side, um, just just a ton, ton of, of, of experience and valuable experience in that and, and within finance and accounting. Um, so we do have another question related to uh, government clearance, which I think, Brian, you kind of also um, mentioned in the beginning. Um, do you need some sort of government clearance, especially given that your main contracts come, you know, with the, say, with the United States or any other types of governments? Yeah, I can touch on that. So, you know, many of our positions require um, a clearance and you cannot get that unless the company sponsors you and you kind of get that ahead of time. Um, but, it, you know, not all of our positions do. Uh, they are fewer and far between and, and heavily sought after, though. Uh, but, uh, you know, the when you are looking at the positions, look at the job requisition, job description, the details, and you can find out what that requirement is. You know, it's hard to tell, you know, which one specifically as we are hiring so many. So just take a closer look at the job description and it'll let you know what those what those requirements might be. I mean, if you need a, a clearance. And if you're eligible to get a clearance, you can get that through Lockheed once you start the hiring process. You don't, you do not need a clearance to apply to any position ever. Uh, so you feel free to apply. Fantastic, Brian. Thank you so much for that great uh, insight and response. Uh, any other questions to to the panel here today? All right. Well, I think that wraps it up, Jamie, Ev Evian, and and Brian. I just want to again thank you again on, on behalf of the university, university uh, from faculty, staff and students here. Uh, we look forward to having you guys on campus and seeing you in the near future. And um, again, if, uh, for students that do have follow-up questions, I also uh, would say, you know, feel free to reach out to the career office. We are just one click away in helping and securing your 
questions related to job opportunities and preparing you for your, your next career venture. So thank you, everyone. I wish you a great rest of the afternoon. Thank you all. This thank is a you. fantastic opportunity. Great to connect with you, Yukon. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Brian. We appreciate having you. Take care, thank everyone. You. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.